Hey guys, I'm Lee and welcome to iMindBlocks. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Uplexa wallet. So there's actually two uh, wallet variants. One is the web wallet, which is super easy to set up and very easy to use. And there's also the kind of the full blockchain uh, version as well. So I'm going to be showing you both uh, versions of the wallet um, and I will show you a few basics with it, how to send and receive transactions, etc. So let's jump into it and uh, get started. So we open up our web browser and I'll show you the web wallet first. If you guys want to skip to the full version um, of the wallet, I'll, I'll just put the timestamp in the uh, video description. So the official web wallet, so the uh, domain name or the website URL, sorry, is wallet.uplexa.com and just make sure it's a secure um, connection. So then you want to go and click on this big button in the middle, which is create a wallet. So like I say, it's going to be super simple. So if you scroll down all the way down, to the bottom you will have your private login key so it's this part here so you just want to copy that or alternatively you want to write it down and save it offline so this is going to be your effectively your one single password seed phrase um, to log it in and out of your account so you need to keep this safe and secure uh, obviously don't share it with anyone so we're going to copy that I'm also going to open up a notepad we'll keep this for reference so I'm going to paste it in here so we've got a reference uh, for it. Uh, so what we have to do is just paste it in the box below to confirm that we've got a copy of this address. And like I say, um, this is only for demonstration purposes. I'm not going to be using this address uh, ever again, so don't worry about me sharing all of these details with you. Uh, but you guys need to keep your own details as safe as you possibly can. So once you've uh, pasted it into the box below, you write down, um, click on the box. Might take a second or two to give you an address, but this is effectively your account. So you now have a Uplexa address. I'm just going to copy that as well, just for a good reference. So this is the main kind of dashboard for your uh, web wallet. So you've got transaction history. Of course, there will be none because it's a brand new account. You can send a transaction. So it's super easy. You've got who you want to send it to. You paste in this address here, the amount and you've got a payment ID. So the payment ID is a bit like a memo field. You use it for uh, tracking transactions across the blockchain. Because Uplex uh, um, has anonymous features for sending and receiving, if you don't use a payment ID, the funds will be transacted and sent or received, um, but you won't be able to um, track that transaction very easily on the blockchain. So it's good, like I say, it's basically a memo field. So if you have a, um, a payment, let's say you may want to make a donation or something, you might have, um, a uh, reference in there that you would uh, use and then it just means you can track that on the blockchain. Similar sort of story for receiving so if you want to receive uh, coins across the uh, the Uplexa network you would provide them with this address here so that's like your receiving address and again like I say you've got this payment ID reference so you want to issue that to someone they can use that and uh, add that as their payment ID which then allows you to track it like I say um, on like a Bitcoin uh, blockchain explorer you can also create new separate addresses so if you want to be super anonymous you can create like a new address for every transaction if you wanted to so that's pretty much it with the web wallet like I say nice and simple nice and basic um, but just make sure you keep that uh, uh, recovery seed phrase uh, private and safe and secure okay so that's the web wallet now let's start with the, the full wallet so if you go to uh, get your plexa from the main website and then if you go to get wallet it actually links to the github uh, repo for your plexa but you can use this direct link and then you want to download a the GUI wallet so I'm using this Uplexa GUI Win64 we'll download that version this is actually my first time using the full uh, wallet. So if we uh, run into any problems, I'll be sharing that with you as well. So the download has completed and we'll just go into our downloads folder. So you can see it there. And then I'm just gonna extract it to a folder of the same name where you can extract it to wherever you like. And there should be a Uplex of what it doing. So this uh, program here, so we're just gonna run that. You might get a warning to say whether you want to allow it to run. I just wanna confirm that. So select the language, 
choose one that's most appropriate to you. So this is kind of like the, so let me just minimize that. So this is the main um, kind of uh, starting interface. So you've got the options to create a new wallet, restore keys from a recovery seed phrase, open a wallet from a file if you have a previous, uh, like a wallet that file, or you can create a new wallet from a hardware device. I'm not 100% sure whether that feature will work. I don't know if there's any uh, current integrations that would work with it, um, possibly. Uh, I think Ledger has now got a Monero integration, so it's possible that that could work, but I'm not too sure. So for simplicity, if you're using uh, or want to just create a brand new wallet, you want to just click on the light bulb, so create a new wallet. And then we can choose a wallet name. And again, we have a recovery seed phrase. So you want to copy that and then you want to save it somewhere. I would recommend, um, if you are ever using these um, seed phrases, I would recommend that you manually write them um, in a notepad or something and keep that notepad safe and secure somewhere. It's the easiest way to keep your um, wallets uh, safe. So we've recorded the recovery phrase, so if we ever, um, if our wallet ever gets corrupted or anything like that, we can, we can restore it. Then we want to go to next. So the wallet program also asks us for a, an encryption password. So you can enter a password of your choice here. Um, choose obviously one that's um, most appropriate to yourself, one that you're not going to forget. And like I say, you can always write it down offline and it helps keep your wallet um, secure. So I'm just going to enter a very uh, basic password here. So that's our password entered, and it gives us a scoring system to tell us how secure it is. And because I'm just using it for demonstration purposes, uh, I've just got a fairly weak password. And we want to click on uh, next. So this option here, if you've already got like a previous uh, blockchain installation downloaded, you can um, basically select it. For most people, it's not going to be relevant for you. So we should just go to next and the, uh, the wallet will connect to peers. Okay, so uh, we just click on use Uplexa and we should get started up with it. So I'm not too sure whether you can um, see that, but my um, Bitdefender antivirus has popped up and it's kind of like blocked it. So I just need to add an exception to the list. And also the Windows firewall. So I just had to make an exception in the Windows uh, firewall and also my um, Bitdefender antivirus. So now the uh, you can see, yeah, it's starting to synchronize. So I'm not too sure this is actually my first time synchronizing this particular wallet, um, but I expect it's probably going to take around about 20 minutes. So we'll leave that running and wait until it's synchronized before continuing on. What it has now uh, synchronized, you can tell it's synchronized by the notification in the bottom left hand corner. It says that the wallet is synchronized and it also tells you kind of what block you're on as well. So what I'm going to show you now is um, just kind of um, sending and receiving transactions. Uh, what I'll do is I'll send a transaction from the web wallet to the local wallet and then we'll send it um, back. So what we want to do using the local wallet, we want to um, see what our receiving address is. So we've got this option here, and um, I believe we can copy it to the clipboard. Yep, so using that option, we can copy it to the clipboard. So now if I go to my web wallet, so I've re-logged in using a, um, an actual account, and now if we go to the send option, so we're going to send it to the local wallet address, the amount I'll send, 10. Um, I'm not going to put a payment ID, we don't need it for this instance, so that's going to be sent. Okay, so that transaction didn't actually go through, and I'll try it once more. Okay, so on that second time around, the transaction did go through. You can see here, and this is uh, something that's worth uh, noting, uh, is the transaction things. So the transaction fees, um, typically with Monero-based um, derivatives, 
because of the uh, ring signatures, the transaction fees can be quite expensive. I believe using the local wallet, you can reduce the number of uh, ring signatures, so that will bring the fees down um, significantly. But you can see here, just using the web wallet, it's just going to use a default uh, fee basis. So uh, bear that in mind, it could be um, quite expensive to send um, uh, when using small transactions. So that should arrive in our local wallet shortly. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, but now we can see the balance on the local wallet has updated. So you can see the balance on the top left hand corner now says 10, um, but the unlock balance is still zero. So we need to wait um, approximately 12 minutes now uh, before we can send the funds back out. So really it's just the network confirmations that we need to wait for before we can resend uh, this money back out. Uh, just to show you what it looks like on the uh, web wallet, we, uh, if we select transactions, you can see a little bit more information regarding the transaction itself. So it is 36.77 was the total amount, including those fees. And then you can see here, it says that the block number that it, the transaction went through on, there was no payment ID, but it also shows you what the kind of the pending time is um, for that unconfirmed transaction to go through. So just a little bit more information from the web wallet side of things. That transaction has now been fully confirmed. So you can see the balance on the top left hand corner, it says balance is 10 and the unlocked balance is also 10. So now we're ready to um, send those trans that those funds onwards uh, if we wish to. So on the kind of the main right hand uh, pane, you can see there's the amount and there's also this transaction priority. So the amount, um, I'm gonna select a smaller amount because I think I wanna leave a little bit of um, basically buffer to cover the fees. Uh, I'm not too sure if we've still got quite enough uh, considering those fees. So the transaction priority is currently set to automatic. Um, I'm going to change it to, um, let's just do it with a normal fee and we'll see whether the transaction will go through. If not, I can try and uh, reduce it. And I'll paste our uh, the destination address there. So it's actually going to the uh, my web wallet address or the don blocks donations address. So it's going to go there. Uh, we're not going to use a payment ID. Um, we're not going to use a description. The description is just like a local um, description. So you could say it was a donation for your own reference or something like that, for example. And um, I've already got the advanced options down, um, but you don't need to worry about any of those um, other parts. So if we send it here, and hopefully we've got um, enough to cover the fees um, as well as the transaction. So let's send it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, that didn't go through. Let's try it with a smaller fee and see where we can get that through. Just notice that this sort of send um, button has kind of changed now. It's like not a button so much anymore. And it's kind of, it's a bit glitched. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. So uh, by using the, the slow or low uh, transaction fee, we can send the amount, but the fee is um, significantly reduced. So the fee is only 1.82. Uh, also tells you the ring size for the signatures there. So that should be fine. We'll send that transaction uh, forward. So we select OK. Enter the password and uh, continue. OK, and that transaction is on its way. So we've got a transaction hash up the top there. And click OK. So that's it, you can see the balance is updated on the left hand side. Um, we should probably be able to see it if we uh, select the history option. So some basic details regarding the transaction, you can see here we received a 10 uplexa and then we sent out five uplexa. It gives you some a little bit more info day, information regarding the fees, etc. Okay, so that's it for another video. I hope you enjoyed watching, uh, learned a little bit about the uplexa wallet. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, leave those in the comments area and I'll be sure to um, answer them the best that I can. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you guys on the next video.